In this video, I'll be working on this painting of a cul-de-sac at dusk. I used to park on this street outside my grandpa's house, and one night I was totally struck by the dramatic lighting on the porch of this neighboring house. So here we are. It could look welcoming or kind of spooky, depending how you look at it. I started this about six weeks ago, and I'm happy with the painting overall, but there's a few things I want to do to finish it. Mainly, I want to smooth over these patchy sections of the sky. I do like the quality of some lighter areas shining through, but the sections of lighter paint are too big and it's distracting. As you'll see, I kind of jump off the track and work on a lot of other things throughout the painting, but thank you for coming along with me for the journey. Here I am just failing to mix the correct color of paint to land to the sky, so continually remixing with different amounts of phthalo and ultramarine blues. And here I'm laying it into the sky everywhere I think it's too patchy. Here I decided the roof color was too warm and too dark in the logic of the painting because there's so much sky reflecting off of that surface. So I mixed a cooler color and laid it in trying to keep the back side of the roof feel like it's receding. I just wanted to quickly emphasize how linseed oil can change the look of some of your colors. So can, you can see very reflective underpainting there. I was thinned out with linseed oil. Here's dried paint and here's more reflective wet paint, but still matte, not no linseed oil in there. Trying to break up this tree by doing varied brush strokes because the whole thing kind of looks like it was painted with the same brush because it was. I just had done ding 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 little leaves all over, trying to do detail, trying to get shadow and light in each little section. But it, when you step away, it looked like the whole tree was just painted by one paintbrush. Every little brush stroke was the same size. Not interesting didn't love it so I'm going back and making some different greens putting a little bit of warmer orange tones in them because the tree is sort of dead and going back over with some more interesting shaped strokes here's something kind of fun I don't paint extremely thickly but I don't paint thin and so when you adjust to the light outside the window you can see the shadows cast by the more thickly painted sections before I could rework my painting, I realized that I was getting such better light coming through the window than I was in this other darker cave-like corner of my room, so I set out to rearrange everything. Like everyone else, Marie Kondo left a huge impression on me, and I really don't like having a lot of extra stuff. I had mostly arranged my room so my precious plants would receive a lot of natural light, but this is even more important to me than my plants, surprisingly. <laughs> because everything I have is functional, this really wasn't that hard to make the switch. I studied painting in school and how to set up a gallery, which should include stuff like leveling and hanging the painting at eyesight, but I'm in no way a professional or an expert. This is just me making my way downtown. You're gonna see me fumble the hanging of the painting here, so don't judge. So here we go. This is my makeshift studio. My plants are now 
five or so feet more away from the window than they were so I hope they're still happy but I'll definitely be more happy now that I can see what I'm doing. I'm continually trying to add depth to the branches of this tree because it can be really easy to let something look flat when there's a strong source of light coming from behind. And since the sky is so bright behind this tree and there's no other very strong source of light hitting it, I want to make sure you're not just looking at a bunch of leaves and sticks in two dimensions. Fluffy slippers are a necessity for painting. For these trees, because they already have a defined volume, I'm trying to break up the centers with smaller shadows so it looks like layers of leaves coming together to make this larger mass rather than one solid ball of tree. These bushes almost felt like they were floating off of the ground because the value on the ground and in the bushes were so similar. So I decided to go back in with some darker shadows to give these bushes some weight and make them feel like they're sitting on the floor. The trunk of this palm tree was feeling flat as well because the darkest shadow is sitting right at the edge of the tree. So I decided to go back in and cover that up with some middle tones and re-darken the more center of the trunk to give it a core shadow, which will make the tree feel more round and give it some weight and make the lighting situation a little bit more believable. I think I'm about to wrap this one up. I'm just going to put in a few finishing touches and call this a painting. This house was distracting to me because the value was too light and it was competing for attention with my main subject of the painting house. So I decided to go back in and make it more blue, more gray, darker, so it sits back in the painting. The porch light used to be massive. So I cut down the size of that and here I'm just adjusting the shadows to fit. Zona, Zona, enjoying the couch. Yeah, on this beautiful day. Oh, sweetie heart. This was a drastic change to make so close to the finish of the painting, but I decided that the sky was too light and it wasn't giving me the feeling of dusk that I really wanted. So I'm reglazing the entire sky with some dioxazine and hopefully this will make the main subject house more of the focus. And that's it! 
Here are some glamour shots of the finished painting. This might be my favorite section of the painting. I wanted to show some different tree drawing techniques. This one is all the same value, it's really just color in line. This one has more highlights and shadows that make the tree feel like a solid object. This one and the next are just a bunch of messy brush strokes that make the tree feel a little bit more flat but they sit more in the background. And here this bush and the tree above I try to use more of the solid light and shadow techniques. This is what I'm talking about when I say I don't paint thick but I don't paint thin. You can see some chunky stuff on there but it's not super dramatic. Here we get to focus on some tire marks and wear on the blacktop of the cul-de-sac. I didn't film myself working on this section but it was so much fun to just let the brush strokes show on those parts. Thank you again for watching along, especially if you were able to bear the sound of my voice while I have a cold. I had so much fun on this one and I plan to work on some other things in the next few weeks, so if the guarantee of me pontificating about my non-archival and hardly stylistic paintings isn't enough to make you want to subscribe, I'll just step out here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you again for watching and if you had a good time too, please leave a like.